Well, hello and welcome to the 27th Degree with Chris and Nancy being broadcast from the Bioskills of the Northeast studio in Fall River, Mass. Today we'll be discussing dog grooming with Alex Vieira and Ann Dupree from Saconic Grooming. Before we begin our conversation, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Bay Coast Bank. Bay Coast Bank is just right for all of your financial needs. Visit baycoast.bank or call 508-678-7641 to learn more. In Duncan Hearing Healthcare, hearing healthcare you can trust with sites in Fall River, Dartmouth, Falmouth, and Centerville. For more information, visit their website, duncanhearing.com. As always, you can support the 27th Degree with Chris and Nancy by subscribing to us on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform and by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, please remember to leave a review. And of course, five star reviews are always greatly appreciated. So, before we get going, maybe you can both tell us a little bit about yourselves. Ann, why don't we start with you? Okay. Um, all right. So I'm an Ohio Midwestern farm girl, <laughs> and uh, I grew up around animals. I mean, they're kind of nice. embedded in my DNA. <laughs> uh, we always had we had a multitude of different animals. We had mm-hmm. cows and chickens and goats and pigs and a horse or two. Um, oh my gosh. We always, <laughs> we always had uh, the stray dogs that came along. Sure. Um, I think maybe on one, possibly two occasions, we might have had you know a situation where we actually went to a dog pound, because that's what they were called back then. Yeah, sure, pounds. of course. <laughs> and we'd get a dog or a puppy, uh-huh. um, but most of our dogs were strays. Um, and I think at any given time we would have like three, two or three. Mm-hmm. And they were free roaming. They slept in the barn in the straw with the animals and kept them safe and protected them. They had their job. You know, they were wonderful. Um, and then we always, of course, had cats. So, mm-hmm. you know, we had cats, you know, a lot of cats. And you still do. And still do. I <laughs> Yes, I have five cats in my house right wow. now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're I all my, rescues. My, my daughter had, a, like, the max of four. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of cats. Yes. Yeah. Right. I know. I've exceeded my maximum, but... It was just one extra over the maximum. Yeah, that, that's fine. You know, so. I'm sorry with that. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we always had a lot of cats, and it just kind of fell. It just kind of was like one of the things that I just kind of grabbed onto, and mm-hmm. I took care of them. I mean, all of us in my family came from a big family, too. There were five kids, um, and we were all responsible for doing different things around the farm. It was more like a hobby farm because my dad yeah. worked a regular job. Okay. Um, and then, you know, he would come and he would do all the farming stuff, and then we had to help with the animals. But the dogs and cats I always gravitated towards. Mm. And I did have a pet goat. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, it's embedded in my DNA. I mean, I just, animals and animal language, it's almost like a mm. spiritual kind of connection that I have with them. Just and Alex is like that too. You. It's sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of. So this is something you always wanted to do, it sounds like. Yes. And, you know, I graduated from high school and I went to college for a few years. I went to a trade school. I worked in careers in the travel industry. I was in public relations. Um, I worked in administration and medical and dental offices. Um, I worked in uh, graphic design. Mm-hmm. But there was just always something missing. Is that pull? It was just like, you know, I would go in when it was dark. Then I would leave when it was dark. And the only thing I did during the day was sit at a desk or, you know, do some files or make some phone calls or whatever. And uh, I would just sometimes sit there and, and say, you know, I, I need to work with animals. I, I need mm-hmm. to physically work with my hands with animals. And the option of veterinarian type right. careers just didn't appeal to me because um, <laughs> They're not always positive. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You, you know, deal with a lot of sick animals. Sick yeah. animals. Dying animals. Yeah. And that's Scared animals. Right. Animals that have to be euthanized. Right. Right. Um, what a great so, way to harness your love for animals into like yeah. grooming. Yeah. I've been great. doing this for 23 years. Oh, my gosh. And it seems like yesterday is when I started. I never grow tired of this. Mm. And um, so the problem... Well, the dilemma was, how do I learn how to do this? How do I right. become, after I decided it was pet grooming that I wanted to, you know, do, I had to figure out how I was going to learn how to do it. So 
I went on different interviews at different salons to see if I could work as an apprentice. And right. It was very negative. A lot of really, really? Oh, you don't want to do this. You know, it's very hard. It's, really? you know, and I just didn't believe it. And mm -hmm. so luckily I worked, I finally, you know, secured a job with, uh, she was an award winning groomer and I was her apprentice for like two years. That's nice. Nice. And then, you know, the opportunity arose where I bought the business and you know, the rest is history. Thank God but, you didn't give up. I love Sakana Growers. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, oh my God. My whole family goes there. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That is great. And how about so, you, Alex? Yeah. Do you have you? a secret farm in your background? Uh, <laughs> oh, I was at a farm yesterday and huh? that's farm. They got, they have pigs now and, um, we have a little, they have a little piggy there. Um, <laughs> but, um, no. So I, I guess I kind of always knew that I wanted to work with animals. I did want to be a veterinarian. That was like, that was my thing. But um, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> um, so I've always kind of like, I've always kind of been in between jobs. I've done, I've done um, telemarketing, which I was actually really good at. Um, I've done, I've sold Cutco knives. Um, I've worked in retail. Um, you know, I worked at Hollister for many years in my younger years, mm -hmm. like in school. Um, I've been a dishwasher. Um, I've worked, my latest before Sakonic Grooming was grocery store. And, you know, we're going to have to, like, work for, like, the rest of our lives, you know. <laughs> so, right. or at least most of your life. Most. So, um, I was sitting in my bathroom one day, and I'm grooming my dog that I rescued from having to, almost having to be put down because she was so badly matted. Oh, jeez. Um, it took me three days two hour intervals each to get all these mats off of her with nothing but scissors in my fingers. <laughs> That's mm. love. But um, I got it all off. And as I'm sitting there doing that, I'm like, you know, I don't really like my job. You know, I do it every day, but I don't like it. So I said, you know, what would I love to do? And when I said that to myself, of course, I'm grooming my dog. I'm like, oh my God, let me try grooming. Mm. So um, <clears throat> I applied to a grooming salon. The one and only grooming salon I applied to was Sakonic Grooming. <laughs> And um, I got an interview the next day. Um, I went in there, and um, and I, I got the keys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and um, next day. I've been managing Sakonic Grooming for the last six years. You know what's really awesome about both of you? You just realized that you weren't connected to your heart and your passion with what you were going to spend such a big part of yep. your life on, your, right. your work. Right. Mm. And it's like, good for both of you. Like, I totally respect yes. both of you for that decision to, like, follow your heart and do what you love. Because sure. not a lot of people do that, and yeah. they stay miserable in their job. So, Well, can I say that I hired him before I even before he even came in for his interview. <laughs> I literally hired him over the phone practically because he was on his way into the interview. It was the coffee. <laughs> and he said to me, yeah, so I just want to let you know that I'm on my way there. Can I get you a coffee? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's that like it. such an instant fire. It was, it was I, I saw his soul. Yeah. <laughs> right there. <laughs> so, is this yeah. someone thoughtful? This is someone you think, you know, he's right. thinking about other people. Um, it, caring. Right. Okay. Um, and that was that was key. And, I'm, you know, of course, we carried through with the interview and stuff. And I just, I fell in love with him. Like, you know, he just yeah. was perfect. Hard that was not mutual. <laughs> that was mutual. Yeah. So how long yeah. did it take you to learn the skill? So I already kind of knew uh, most of what I know on my own. You know, it was just kind of like the faces that I needed to finish, that I needed to work on. Wait, let's back up a minute. How did you naturally know? So I've been grooming my own animals. I, like, it all started with rabbits. Okay, mm. so when I was eight years old, I wanted a puppy so bad, but um, my mom and dad worked two and three jobs. You know, they've always, you know, been hard workers to, you know, make it and get by. Um, and I had to figure it out myself. You know, we weren't taking rabbits to groomers back then. So um, I had an, a beautiful Angora rabbit and I was like, oh, crap, you know, we're getting tangles and knots and all this stuff. So I grabbed my dad's beard trimmer. <laughs> and I went down in the basement, and I did it myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know, so it really started with the rabbits. And then um, when I was old enough to have my own animals, um, now I have too many. <laughs> I have four dogs. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. And um, as Anne said, you know, the rest is pretty much history. You know, I'm, I'm going to be doing something I love for the rest of my life. So you, you kind of learned that in necessity and, and just enjoyed right. it. Right. I mean, I already kind of knew how to, like, you know, groom the bodies. It was just kind of honing in on 
you know, perfecting it. Yeah. You know? And not not everybody can do grooming. They can want. Well, I was just going to say, like, but... you obviously had some natural ability. Yeah. I've... Because it would be a horror show if you let me try to groom anything. Like, Don't try to groom Jazzy on your own. No. So Jazzy's my Portuguese water dog, uh, yeah. and I, I'm lucky if I brush her, as you probably yeah. know. No, you, you know do a pretty what? good job. You keep her on regular um, schedule, so, you know, <laughs> she never comes in in a mess, so to speak. Yeah, but so, it's uh, I have always not said, natural. I've always said that it takes the skill of, in order to be a good groomer. It takes the skill of a surgeon, the patience of a saint, mm -hmm. okay, um, the endurance of an athlete. Yeah. Um, right? Yeah. And Show of a surgeon, because... patience of a saint, endurance of an ath athlete, and the strength of a bodybuilder. Like, and then you have to have the ability. This is so overlooked, and not everybody has this. You have to be able to understand dog language on a very, very deep level. Mm -hmm. Because their language is not words. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, yeah, are there groomers out there that, you know, they, you know, groom dogs and they process them and send them on their way? Um, we're not like that. We go deep. Um, we try to understand what makes them tick. Um, so, for example, you know, there's going to be the occasional dog that's, quote, reactive. And I call it reactive. It's, it's not they're a bad dog because there's no such thing to me as a bad dog. I love that sentiment because nowadays yeah. you hear so many dogs getting labeled. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's no such thing as a bad dog. And these reactive dogs are probably some of the best dogs I groom because you have to you have to work through that. Mm -hmm. Right. When you work through that and you really see that dog's personality, yeah. Yeah. It's it's not just grooming. It's because, like but they could be anxious for other right. things that have happened. So in many their different lives. reasons. There's, right. There's reasons why they're reactive. And I try to explain that to the owner. It's like we're not taking it personally as groomers, you know. And like I said, we don't label them as bad dogs. It's either because they're scared or frightened. Mm -hmm. They have a bad association with, you know, being handled, whether it's from a, another groomer or a, another veterinarian's office or whatever, um, or they're in pain. Mm. You know, it's like so we try to we to us, it's a red flag when a dog is reactive. Something is up that we need to find out what's going on here with this dog. It could be something that happened at home. Um, but the ability to read dogs and understand their language is crucial and it's often overlooked in the grooming industry. Um, like they don't talk with words. Yeah, you, we can almost like when when you do this for so long. You can literally look at a dog and like and just kinda, a lot of body language. Yeah, and, and what you kind of like you you make a connection and you you can almost like figure out what they're yeah. trying to say. Yeah, they oh, understand yeah. a lot though. They really do. They it's do. Remarkable. Oh, very. I mean, they do understand very a lot of our you know. words. Sure. Really, yeah. a lot of our words, but also our body language and the way we interact with them. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's great that you take that approach. And I know we've had a conversation because Jazzy can be anxious. And it was just really nice because you were the only one that mm -hmm. had ever in, like, my years of grooming dogs. You were that. the only one that ever mentioned it. And it just made me well, wonder, well, what was Jazzy happening, <laughs> like, yeah. at these other places, yeah. you know? Never because you're just like, here's how she is displaying, like, behaviors. And here are some options that you can do to make her feel more comfortable. Right, right. And I was like... Wow. Right. You know, thank you so much for having that conversation. We've desensitized so many dogs just because we recognize it. I mean, I have a handful. Alex has a handful that are, you know, specific to we just groom them because they we know. form a trusting bond. We try to figure out what it is, and then we work with that, and then a trusting bond is formed. Mm. Um, and slowly over time, dogs are all about trust. How many dogs right. do we have that, quote, unquote, don't like men? Right? Yeah. You're fine with me. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't ever have an issue there. A lot of it's in the approach, too. Yeah. You know, and the, the, the smells. I mean, men emit testosterone. You know, they can smell that. Dogs can smell things on mm -hmm. a cellular level. And it's like, you know, fear. That's why police dogs, they're trained to smell and detect the fear pheromone that the, you know, the oh. perpetrator. Yeah. That's why they can follow them and find them hiding under a bush. They smell it. It's all smell. Because there's something that we should be doing when we bring our pets to be groomed to kind of prime them for their little day of grooming? Exercise. Um, oh, really? Yeah, exercise. Yep. 
Exercise huh. would be it off. definitely great. If you have a, an anxious dog that has a lot of energy, exercise is key for sure. Um, always make it a positive experience. You know, if you walk in there and you're nervous because you know your dog's going to be nervous, they're going to be they nervous. feed off of you. They feed off of your energy. I always say it's like an energy that's going right down the leash, like a mm. wire, mm -hmm. <laughs> right into them and their collar. That's so, so true. true. It's your energy. You have to. Sometimes you have to, like, you really make an effort. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been times. To say okay, I've got to calm myself down, and you know, because they, they really do pick up on that. There's been times I've, I'm grooming a dog, and you know, I'm scared. Here I am grooming a 120 pound German Shepherd that's, you know, somewhat reactive at times, and. I have to, sometimes I'll just have to walk away and think to myself, all right, Alex, you know, don't be scared. Because <laughs> if you're scared, you're going to know you're scared. Yeah. And that's when they're going to react. They can, they can sense a lot. Absolutely. Pretty remarkable. I, I almost always know when a dog's going to react before it even reacts. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, that's, that's a that, good trait to have as a handler. That's that <clears> skill <throat> that not everybody has. That split second picking up on the vibes. You know? I mean, plus, you have to have a basis of kindness. I think they pick up on that. Like, if you're like some kind of aggressive gorilla yeah, trying to groom a dog, you know, you know, right? Like, that's yeah. not gonna just not gonna work. Well, in the animal world, you know, they they become defensive. If if you're defensive, feeds aggression feeds aggression, and that's instinctive, right? Right. So, um, you know, if a dog, if something, if you're angry at a dog you're basically backing it into a corner. So a dog's instinct is, well, you're not going to, you know, I have to defend myself. Mm -hmm. So it's never, it's never. Uh, In its best interest. No. Anyone's best interest to do something like that. I mean, any kind of mistreatment of any animal at any time is complete zero tolerance mm -hmm. at Sakonic grooming. It's, it's, it's stupid. First of all, it yeah. doesn't do anybody any good. Right. It's like. You, you it puts have the to, dogs at risk. There's a, it puts there's the, a way to assert your alpha without calm assertive being. Yeah. Oh, I like that being phrase. Aggressive. Calm assertive. Yeah. yeah. That's what calm I'm going to be. Calm assertive. assertive. All right. Got calm it. Assertive. Calm assertive. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. So, what are the trickier dogs to groom? Are there breeds that are trickier or is it just <clears throat> individual? Or is it like personality based? I mean, like with the dog? You know, Sometimes I groom the most loving chow, you know, and then I groom the most intense Yorkie. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it really, it really comes down to, you know, how are they brought up? Yeah. What are their, what are the, what is their background? What have they experienced in their life? You know, how, is this a, a dog that was rescued and came from a bad background? Mm -hmm. You know, it, so many things go into it, but you know, when you're one-on-one -on -one with an animal, you can change that mm -hmm. You can definitely change that and make I it say, oh, sorry, no, go ahead. I would say tricky breeds. Um, Samoyeds. Yeah. Samoyeds are, very, what, what would you say, Alex, besides Samoyeds, maybe uh, the Golden Doodles, they're a very popular breed right yeah, now. They yeah. are so popular. Sometimes what they're getting into and their right. requirements. and yeah. Golden Doodles are, intense. are, Golden Doodles are a very intense, um, high maintenance breed. What are like the three most like high maintenance breeds that you use? Golden Doodle is definitely number one, I would say. Because of their Samoyed. Samoyed. A lot of energy um, they have, or what is it that makes them high you know, I a think, difficult breed. I think what happens is maybe some people are adopting golden doodles for the wrong reason. Okay. Because they're absolutely darling. They're yeah. Darling puppies. Yeah. They're, they're fluffy. They're cute. They're the quintessential, you know, yeah. dog. Okay. And it's like they get them for the wrong reason. Okay. Maybe they didn't do enough research about, you know, what it entails. So what ends up happening is the fluffy fluffy is so cute, but as groomers okay so they bring the dog in it's like five months old now and hasn't had a brush on its body and mm. um it's like pelted yeah and they don't understand the owners don't understand it it's they don't understand that you know this has to come off it's i'll never really forget short. the short never forget the time i groomed the golden doodle two years old never groomed oh yeah. no never and not groomed. like imagine if you never brushed your child's hair for and years. and the woman said to me Oh, I, I do I do brush him very often. I use a Furminator. What's a Furminator? We'll get into that. So, <laughs> so what a Furminator <laughs> is? It's it's really for short coated dogs, and it actually does cut the coat a little bit. Um, but it's great for um, labs, um, pit bulls, those short those really really short coated dogs. Mm. Um, it helps. Yeah. yeah, it helps get that undercoat out. 
you never want to use that on a dog with hair, so to speak, because all it does is it breaks the hair. You know, it just it completely ruins the coat quality. <clears throat> so there's so many products out there. How do you know, like, you know, there's like you see on the infomercials, like the hand mitts and the whatever, you know, all these like little things like the brushes versus the combs. Like you really kind of have to know your breed and do a little bit of research, right? If yeah. it's an infomercial, just don't buy it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's <laughs> lots of rumor. They never, they're <laughs> always... Information Wait, and you see all the ads though. on yeah. Facebook yeah. and everything, too. I mean, TikTok, yeah. there's so yeah. much stuff out there. It's like, what so, should you be buying? So, I mean, I'm just going to use this as an example for Jazzy. You know, you would want to use the pin brush, you know, which is a brush that has, like, yes. you know, those little pins. Soft, soft. The soft pin brush. And then, um, you know, a comb, yeah. metal comb. Those, those are going to, those are your go-to's for sure. So, and again, Jazzy is a Portuguese water dog. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, with a, with a yeah. thick curly coat. Yep. <clears throat> Lots of energy. And, you know, That's if we did our job right, which I think we did, um, we showed you the proper way to brush her at home, you know, from the skin out, you know, and section by section, you know, surface brushing, mm -hmm. you know. This is I really like the way that you did the analogy with, like, your daughter's hair or something, because you would never start from, like, a kid's top of the head and just go whoosh. Yeah. Like, you have to kind of hold it yeah, and, like, yeah, even yeah. start at the yeah. bottom a little bit yeah. and work your way up. Right. Right. Like, you have to think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. what else are kind of some tips and tricks to what you should be doing at home, like, to make sure you're... Mm. Well, I, I, Dr. Jankis has a little dog, a little rebel. And what kind of dog is he? He's half King Charles Cavalier, half poodle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Two. The, there is a limit to what you can do at home, really. I mean, we get a lot of yeah. like, home grooming, you know. Disasters. <laughs> oh, oh, look what I did to her. I can't, you know, yes, fix her. That would her. be me to right. life. I, I tried. to groom myself. Even yeah. I would rather groom my own dogs at the salon. Um, uh. It's easier on your back, for one. <laughs> I mean, you have all the equipment and I mean, I, I, tools. Yeah. It's just, it's, just better. it's just better to get it done by your professional. However, there is maintenance that you should be doing at home. You know, you should be, if you have a... Basic brushing. Basic brushing, um, walking, you know. Um, I get off kind of easy because I have two very energetic dogs and I have a fenced-in yard. So um, I open up my door and they just chase each other for like hours. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. and then there's their walk. I mean, I, we still walk them, yeah. but you know, you know how it is in, in the winter, it's kind of mm -hmm. cold. Nobody wants to go out and walk their dog yet. In 30 degrees, right? Right. Um, but it is important, especially if your dog is anxious, you know, and they're going somewhere. You know, you want them, you want them to be as calm as possible, tired, so to speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's so it's a, it's an easygoing process for everyone. So, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. So he said the word seasonal, and it triggered um, something I wanted to mention. Um, there's a common misconception to let your dog, you know, grow out during the winter so that he has a long winter coat to keep him warm. Right. Um, and that's not 100% accurate. Um, matting, if a dog gets matted because they haven't been groomed, they haven't been brushed at home, um, that actually creates condensation under the coat. So they get more of a chill and it's not oh, healthy. that makes okay. sense. So you have to maintain those that grooming regimen throughout the whole year, regardless of the weather, yeah. because a fluffy, healthy, clean coat is the best buffer to you know environmental fluctuations um in, in order for them to stay warm uh so yeah just wanted to emphasize that that you know and, and let's talk about year long and let's talk about the skin irritations that can happen um you know if you have a dog that's matted and you have getting condensation under there it's not drying properly so you'll have a dog that's wet and it'll be wet for hours maybe even a day or two and um, what that can create is hot spots, um, bacteria, yeast. Um, yeast overgrowth. And, you know, I have seen dogs where they were so matted in certain areas, you shave that off, and the skin is actually raw under there. Mm. Um, so painful for the dog. Um, so that's, you know, letting your dog grow out for the winter is not always, of course, you, you want to have them in a full coat, sure, that's fine. But it has to be healthy. You know, it can't have those mats and those... The longer the coat, the more frequent the groom. Mm hmm Okay. And as far as golden doodles are concerned, because it's such a popular breed, so I always go back to the golden doodle. Um, as far as time frame, I would say every four to six weeks is probably the best bet for a golden doodle. Most, of, go, most golden doodle owners like their golden doodles long and fluffy. So long and fluffy means 
frequent grooms. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say a good regimen in any dog is uh, about eight weeks. You know, every eight weeks you should ha- be having your dog groomed. Yeah. So when you say any dog, like I was just writing down, like what about the, those like really short-haired dogs, like Shit. pit bulls or like yeah. labs? Yeah. All right, yeah. are yeah. And if you're just doing like, yeah, I don't know, like maybe even nothing at home, do they still need to be groomed too? So it, it kind of depends. I mean, grooming, nail cutting is part of grooming. Okay. So your dog's nails do need to be cut every every month to two months, regardless. Um, as far as the grooming, the bathing part, um, you know, labs do get packed fur. You may not know it, you may not see it, but the groomer sees it. Yeah. Um, in the tub, usually it's near their behind, um, mm-hmm. that it gets it gets really thick and chunked, and you have to have to get in there and get that undercoat out because, again, just because you don't don't see it doesn't mean it's not there, and it is holding in condensation, which will cause your dog to start biting its bum, and then. We have a hot spot for the summer, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Right. Not even the summer. Huh. It can be any time of year. Yeah, any time of the year. Mm-hmm. But so also, you... too. I say summer because I feel like you see it more in the summer. Dogs are getting out more. They're yeah. getting wet. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that clumpy fur, like, is going to retain moisture. Right. Like, they go swimming in the ocean, and they get out, and they shake off a little bit. The clumpy part is still going to be, you know, stay wet. I had a golden um, retriever years ago that had those hot spots. and Yeah. yeah. That can be, like that's food-related. Right? That, <laughs> yeah, he, did, he wasn't yeah. really in the he water much. Really he just would, like, lick these areas incessantly. He yeah. down to, like, raw skin. And yeah. yeah. Food has a lot to do with yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, I think now in. we know it's oh, probably yeah. allergy. A lot of it's allergy-related, but back then, no one really knew. Right. Well, yeah. I didn't either until you yeah, told me that, too. Yeah. You're you're I'm like she's always like chewing on her pores and you're like what's yeah, her food if you're grooming a dog and you see this stuff then you know that some of this is a it's a really a medical issue or a veterinary yeah. issue so you probably make a recommendation absolutely to the, sure. to the yeah. owner so I'm glad you brought that up we were actually talking about that in the car um one thing that uh groomers don't get a lot of credit for is uh you know you take your dog to the vet once a year, and it has a yearly exam. The vet spends about 45 minutes. Okay. You walk out the door $700 later. Um, That's so true. <laughs> groomers, you know, we are on top of your dog literally every six to eight weeks. We see every inch of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. We are going to be the ones that pick up on something that's um, unusual. Okay, whether it's maybe they're acting Tumor a little bit differently. Or even at like a yeah, we've actually like had cases where the dog just was acting strange. I'm thinking of Chloe, right? Was just acting like out of character. Like, right. what is going on? Is this not her? And we so we start lifting. We up. don't diagnose we lift ever. Their lips. We see. We look at yep. the gums. You know yep. what? What's going on here? Yeah, we try to. You know, we'll find. We see. We'll look and see if we can find anything. Um, and we're not vets. We're not trying to be vets. We don't diagnose. Um, we will then pass that on to the owner and say, listen, this is what we observed. She was acting really strange. Um, or, you know, her gums seemed like they were kind of pale. Take that information, bring it to your vet, and, you know, see what they can, you know, see, figure something out. Because something is not right with her. So we did this with this one particular dog. And what was the situation? She ended up, like, I, I'm not the totally next day sure. Or two um, days later, I think they, she. I think she was like in organ failure. Oh, but yeah, and the owners didn't know. It, it was just. And then another dog, you know, with diabetes. The dog was losing oh, yeah. weight, losing and I weight. Said, and I said to the guy, I'm like, he's so skinny. Do you, uh, you know, how many times a day do you feed him? And you know, I, I, I wasn't thinking diabetes at all. Mm-hmm. And he was a di- dog was a diabetic. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. PrimaCare is Southeastern New England's trusted leader in medical care. With offices in Fall River and surrounding communities, we're dedicated to your well-being. Our carefully selected team of more than 150 providers offers world-class primary and specialty medical care. PrimaCare doctors are supported by a skilled staff trained to deliver comprehensive radiology, imaging, and testing services. PrimaCare is large enough to take care of all your medical needs, but small enough to care for you personally. PrimaCare is by your side. What do you think about the raw food diet for dogs? Do you, are you um, a proponent raw of that? Raw food is great, mm-hmm. um, but the problem, well, I don't want to even say that it's a problem. It's one of those things that you have to really be committed to. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You yeah. can't do a little bit of this and then some raw. And there's a way to do it. Yeah. And remember, I tried ideally, it. Yeah. That was not a good idea. <laughs> dog did like yeah, it. No, on a raw because, oh, no, it's, the dog loved it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What came out wasn't fun. Yeah. Was it, yeah. Because um, what happens is the body, um, the dog's body actually... Um, develops enzymes and all these mm-hmm. things in its gut 
specifically for the food that it's being fed. Yeah, you have to probably of. introduce it slowly if you right. make yeah. food change. And then like you that. have to commit to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's expensive. It um, is. But, you know, I mean, people don't spare any expense with their pets. No. Um, no. They're, you have to they're eat it like then and there because one of my jazzies yeah. started off on a uh-huh. raw yeah. diet. But then, you know, after like a month, it's like she wasn't going to eat it. Then we had to throw it out. It just couldn't like sit there. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, it was and, like, the, and there's hard. a way to do that too. You know, yeah. um, it's about training your dog to eat when it's told to eat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to do this with when I got my uh, Pitbull Shepherd. Um, she would eat everyone else's food. Mm-hmm. So it's your food's down for 20 minutes. You don't eat it. They eat it take, tomorrow. Take the bowl away. And, you know, they'll they'll figure it out they'll learn you know yeah. maybe they might be weird for a couple of days yeah, but I think we try that but yeah. then you know healthy dog does it starve itself. they get used to it they get used to it and mm-hmm. and I don't have that problem now now I don't have to take the bulls away it's yeah. there they eat it they're done that's good the other thing too about the raw diet is you know you do have to know what you're doing do your research mm-hmm. because there are certain nutrients that you have to supplement with um so yeah, you, you got an. It's the thing you got to But it's so important you're... to give them good food because yeah, we're, we're probably shortening the lives of all our out. pets by. It's what they're eating every single day. Every day, imagine if you ate the same, same thing, thing every day. Every single day, I mean, you have to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, know. Yeah, we, we do. Definitely do. You do. Yeah. What kind of treats do you like to give them? Like you know. Oh, I don't do I don't do much treats for my dogs really. But if I do, if I am going to do a treat, it's usually. What something like she would do, you know? I'm gonna boil some chicken, or um, I'll. F- I'll so it's f- like people food treats. Yeah, or I'll do like a steak, yeah. a boiled steak, yep. <clears throat> cut that into chunks. They really we hang out at Alex's yeah. house just for the leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, some steak. people do carrots. Um, yep, carrots, green too. beans. Um, you know, depending on the dog's preference. Yeah, the dogs love that kind of stuff. Do I don't like celery. Anything that is whole... a vegetable. Yeah. Is celery okay for dogs meat. or not? I love no. rebel. No. Not really. There's no nutritive value yeah. in celery in general. Carrots. <laughs> What is celery in Yeah, it's just a bunch of fibrous uh, <laughs> stuff. Right? Oh my God. It's like negative calories. So. Well, I, I'm friends with a, a veterinarian. He's a naturopathic veterinarian. Mm. Um, and he was actually, uh, he was the marketing director of a company called Abdi Pet Foods. Okay. And they were all about, everything was like freeze-dried, freeze-dried organs and heart mm. and meat and beef and all that kind of stuff. I learned a lot from him. But he... Uh, bred Newfoundlands. Now, mm-hmm. Newfound- Newfoundlands yeah. are huge dogs and, you know, big food requirements, okay? Right. Um, and mm-hmm. he would feed those dogs the raw diet, okay? And he said, um, and the, the, then the freeze-dried, you know, organs mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And uh, those dogs were gorgeous. Yeah. They had gorgeous, shiny coats. He said their poopy was like, you know, hardly. It was, you know, little tiny, which has a lot. Right. It says a lot. You Absolutely. Know? Did they, did they live longer food. because new They lived longer. Don't live that long generally. So yeah. I was wondering about Yeah. That. No, they live to be like 15 and 16 yeah, years cause old. Yeah. That, so that yeah. says a lot because there's, there's a whole theory that. The food is what's killing our animals. So oh, it probably. absolutely is. I mean, I newfies usually live like what seven years, eight years. So yeah. that's like double the life expectancy. Well, supposedly, the real life span of say an average dog, like a golden retriever, yeah. retriever or a lab, is twenty five years. Right. Wow! In the perfect world, yeah, really. And don't leave out, you know, the water that you're giving them. I always tell right. people, are you giving your dog your chlorinated tap water because chlorine is designed to kill bacteria. So mm. your dog ingests that water multiple times a day. Guess what it's doing? It's killing the microbiome bacteria, yeah. the healthy microbiome, which is where the immune system, yeah. immune cells are made. Um, you know, so, and you never really think of that. Like, no, you can just put a no. filter it's on amazing. your if you it, wanted to. Right. Like, yeah, there's, a, there's yeah, a lot there's of a picture. information out there on, on food for, you know, our animals. And yeah. how we're probably doing them a disservice in most instances. Oh, yeah. You know, what we give them. Really keep it simple. Yeah. Really keep it simple. A meat source, you know, maybe some, um, you know, greens if they'll eat them or, um, you know, just water that's quality mm. water, um, not a lot of junk, just like how you would eat. Yeah, you know, yeah. whole food, simple. Isn't that such a disconnect that we just don't think about sometimes? Like we're doing like all this stuff for us, yeah. but yet we have like a a living pet in our home, like a living, growing entity, and we're just like, here, here's this garbage. Here's yeah, that. I also I often think that eating the same exact thing every single day for their entire life. Yeah, like and, depressing. depressing. And you don't have to do that. No, you don't. It's just it's, it you, if you're gonna mix it up, you know, do it gradually. You know, or mix it with what they mm. had the day before with, you know, what you're going to give them, 
you know, that day. Um, um, I, I used to give my dogs taste of the wild and there's like multiple flavors. There's, uh, you know, the bison and venison and then there's the waterfowl and then there was the, the, um, wild boar. And I would, I would change it all mm. the time. And because it was in the same, you know, it was in the same family of foods, the same formula. It's just the meat source was a little bit different. Yeah. Usually they talk right a lot of sense well. too. Because people buy those yeah. big bags of food, it's one flavor. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, oh, great, chicken again. I know. You know. So, I mean, as a groomer, you, other than grooming, you're doing other things. I mean, gro well, people think of grooming. I think they think about, like, cutting the, the fur or the hair. It's oh, actually here. It's but you, you're doing the nails, your teeth probably, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe anal glands, things yeah. like that. Uh -huh. So, yeah, tell us, walk us through what, what you do for a typical dog that comes in. Okay. I'll go first, and then I'll let Alex go, because Alex is, you know, for now does a lot more grooming than I do now because I've kind of pulled back, but I have been doing it for 20 some years. <laughs> so basically, um, there is kind of that misconception that, you know, grooming is just fluff and puff and, you know, you know, my dog's been there for an hour. Can I come and pick it up? Right. You know, um, it's a lot. It's, uh, you know, so they, they come in, it depends on their coat, if they're long coated mm -hmm. or short coated, if they're long coated, you know, we look at the condition of the coat. They cannot go in the tub, but there's any matting at all. Um, or if there's a lot of density there, it's got to be pre, you know, it's got to be prepped. Okay. So that involves whatever is required to bring the coat down a little bit. Then they get, they go in the bathtub, you know, they get their nails cut. Their glands will be expressed if, if, the, if it's needed or if it's requested. We, it's not standard. Um, it used to be the standard, but I, I don't agree with that. There are some dogs that never need to have it done. Um, right. it's natural for a dog to have, it, you know, to have that happen. Mm. Um, you know, when they poopy or whatever um but some dogs if, if they get older or they're arthritic um you know they need a little bit of help there and a lot of times you know i always say you know is that what your vet recommends you know because if it's not done right it can be troublesome so then they're they're dried they're mostly it's a force dryer okay it kind of forcefully blows the air off of them that removes the dead skin that lifts the coat um you know and then Sometimes it depends, um, you know, the dog will either go up on the table and will table dry it the rest of the way with different kinds and types of dryers, um, or they'll go into the crate and, you know, they'll be dried there, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, of course I have to mention that, you know, if you're looking around for a grooming salon, um, make sure you see what kind of drying mechanisms they're using. Um, we have open crates, um, and then we have dryers that clip on the front that are, um, they have a dial, so there's an automatic shutoff. Um, of course, it's everyone's worst fear that, you know, some kind of tragedy would occur from overheating. So we take all the precautions necessary to make sure that that doesn't happen. They don't get past a certain temperature and they don't stay on longer than what, is it 15 minutes? Uh, it's, it's a half hour, but, um, you know, bringing it back to the drying situation, when there is a dog in there that's like, you know, on the older side, you know, mm -hmm. which want them to be warm. Um, I'm super OCD, so I'm 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 probably checking these dryers, you know, <laughs> pro every five minutes. And they're in the same room as we are. You yeah. know, right. You can literally like from here to here, and we look. You know, right. they're not tucked away in a closed door room. And when there's a situation, a when there's there a situation, there are some grooming boxes that are horrific. I just can't even. Where we have um, when we have a dog in a crate that's elderly, um, you know, it's obviously cold, so we want it to be warmer. Mm -hmm. You know, we let we let all the staff know. You know, hey, by the way, this dryer's on. No more than five minutes. Let me know. You know? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. So everyone is aware. You know, not just, you know, we're human, you know? Right. So you want you want all your staff to know, you know, yeah. what's we going have, on. We have, I know my personal salon, I don't know of any other salons that do this. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But um, I have 26 safety checkpoints, safety mm -hmm. procedures. You're working with animals. Mm. Things happen. Okay, and we do everything possible to, you know, make that possibility being proactive, zero. so you're not going to run into an right. issue. It's serious. I mean, we have some things that I've never seen any other grooming salon have. Mm. Certain but safety precautions that we take. Um, ask them. I'm an absolute fanatic about safety. Yeah, um, she was. She was on me. <laughs> like when, when I first started. <laughs> That's good though. She was on me, and um, you know, she's molded me into the person I am today. Thank you, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, you know, so now, you know, now that I've been doing it for six years, now she's like, if I, if I do something, she knows it's, it's for a reason, you know, um, 
because I'm right there with her. Mm. You know, safety is definitely our number one priority in Sakana grooming, without a doubt. Safety uh, and just how we handle and, and connect with the dogs. Right. So now you said something when you were going through your process of actually like grooming a dog. Um, I think a lot of people think the first thing they do is, and the second thing is throw them in the tub, towel dry them, and then stop brushing them. But that's mm. not no. true. No. So it, it all it, it, first of all, it comes down to the breed, you know, um, and the condition of the coat. You know what? What, it, what am I get, having to work with? So, um, I wish I had some examples, right? Um, yeah, next time you bring some puppies. So, yeah, you know, right? it's bring yeah. some puppies. So you know, say you give me a golden doodle that's you know has some mats. You know, I'm gonna put that dog on my table. First, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip its nails first. That's like just the first thing shave I always do. Clip its nails, shave its pads, check the condition of the coat. You gotta work whether I have to pre-strip it. I call it pre-stripping. You know, when you shave the dog down like rough, like a rough sketch. Yeah. You know, um, or can I just work some of those mats out and work with a full coat so I can leave it fluffier? You know, it really depends on how far gone is it. Right. You know. Right. Um, so you know, the prep work is first, and then the bath, and you know, once the bath is done, yes, you know, we do towel dry it. Mm -hmm. It's the fourth force drying procedure, you know, that will force dry the dog. Whenever there's those curly coats, of course, I try to put them on the table and get them blown out with a hairdryer as best as possible to give them that fluffy look. Um, not that you have to do it all the way, but some dogs you do. It kind of depends, you know. Like mm -hmm. Jazzy, I probably wouldn't have to do all the way. Uh -huh. But um, a tighter coat than that, like, because believe it or not, some golden doodles that are pretty tight, and they have those really curly, yeah. curly cues. Yeah. Um, you know, you want to try to get it as best as possible because it, the finish will just be that much, that much better. Yeah. You know, it'll it'll be finessed, how I like to say. You know. <laughs> what do you do with a dog who just hates the sound of the dryer? Because that must happen. I'm, I'm glad you asked that. Okay, so um, we have something called like a happy hoodie. Okay. Um, happy hoodie. A happy hoodie. It's this little thing that goes over their head, they and it'll, so it'll, it'll cover their ears. And I'm not going to say that it's it's going to work for sure. Sure, but it it, it'll definitely help. And, you know, there's settings on the force dryer. You know, you don't have yeah. to go in there full blast. Right, right. You, know, you can lower that. You know, it's, it's all into how you introduce it. I would never, ever, ever put a dog in the, for, in the force drying, you know. Um, I would never force dry a dog for the first time on the highest setting. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, and you're not gonna start it near their face, right? You know, you want them, start you want them to get used to it. What do you do? Or how do you know if a dog needs their anal glands? You know, like, well, you normally, breast. I, I would feel it. You you yeah. feel it, and before I even go into feeling the situation, you know, a, a customer will say, "Oh, you know, can you check my dog's anal glands?" I said, "Okay, well, you They'll know." They'll scoot. They might is scoot. Your, mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the dog okay. scooting at oh. home? My <laughs> yeah. dog does that occasionally, and sometimes even after the anal glands are expressed, he's still yeah. scooting. So yeah. maybe it's irritated. Yeah, it's, it could be. It's just a little yeah. irritated. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I, I'm thinking the dogs don't find that too much of a good experience. Actually, th no? we don't really have a... No, no problem yeah, with that. I think it would good. be uncomfortable. Not many dogs object. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, okay. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if if someone I didn't really know was hovering around my butt, I might be a little, <laughs> I might be a little weary myself. Right, right. I mean, just you uh -oh. know, the stuff these dogs put up with. Huh? Really? <laughs> you know, if you really oh, think oh about it. But it, you, yeah. you, I, I would ask the customer questions. You know, is your dog scooting? Yeah. You know, are you smelling a foul, fishy smell yeah. when the dog is yeah. when the dog gets startled? It must be nasty the stuff you get out of there. Yeah, we won't get too into it. No, let's not I get mean, into in it. In all seriousness, I, yeah. this is going to be such a, you know, this is probably TMI, but um, the anal glands are important, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the first thing that happens when two dogs meet each other? Yeah, yeah, of course. They go straight for the butt. Yes, okay? yes. And that's because that's like a scent gland, mm -hmm. okay? And it kind of contains all of the information. It's like a little newspaper of that dog. It's right. health, it's sex, it's... Uh, you know, temperament, um, it's, you know, if it's sick, um, this is all taking place in a split second. Right. Of that sniff thing. Ton of information. Yes. It's literally the information. Going about dating all Center. Yeah. Like. <laughs> she said, I've been going. dating all around. <laughs> Maybe so. Yeah. I know. I know. Thank God, right? And I thank God we don't have the ability to smell like yeah. dogs do. Yeah. Yes, I know. Well, that wouldn't be a good thing. No. But <laughs> <laughs> so back to the grooming thing. So 
once the dog is bathed and dried, that's when, you know, the big stuff comes in, you know, okay. um, that's the finish work. That's the scissoring. That's the expertise. That's where it all ties in with the skill mm. of the groomer. Um, some dogs, three, four hours of labor. Really? Hands on. I'm not talking about labor that's interrupted. And you're no, doing just this. this is hands on for four hours. You're working on that dog yeah. exclusively. Uh -huh. I don't um, think you ever realize that because even in my mind, like, yeah. and I know you take a long time with the dogs. I feel as an but hour, so. I, I yeah. was just thinking, you know, it's like basic yeah, you don't, stuff, you and really you don't, don't realize. realize all the finesse that yeah. goes yeah. into yeah. really taking care of a dog properly. Is grooming is they're skill. grooming. Any groomer can groom, can groom a dog, you know, but it, it really comes down to the finesse. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yep. And then you have observations. And I think that was so key when yep. you had said, like, you know, you can spot if a dog isn't doing well. And especially yep. because you're not seeing that dog every day, which might get away from that owner a little mm -hmm. bit. If yep. I like super like incremental little right. incremental changes. Yeah. But then you see them like once every six weeks and you're like, oh, my God. Well, I can so see you. I doesn't can, look like. We're getting towards the end, unfortunately. But I got some rapid fire questions I want to ask. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. All right. So one, cleaning the teeth is that difficult? So that's more of, I mean, that's something you have to do at home. Like that's the, you, you guys do that as groomers? No, we do. We do, but yeah. I mean, we're just brushing. If you have you a dog, brushing. scale teeth, like you're getting some vet scale vet. off in that. Yeah, yeah, that's more of a vet procedure. How about the nails? That must be tough for some dogs. For some dogs, yeah, yeah but you know, we have we have employees that you know we can have someone hold. Okay. You know? And you got to know what you're doing. I mean, if you go to a groomer and they're quicking your dog every single time, you're going to create a situation with that dog that they're going to associate that situation or that procedure with pain. That dash so, hound. Yeah. Right. Oh. That one's amazing. For, Tell the story. Uh, I don't know if we can have time for the whole story, but long story short, this dash hound was quicked at the vet. Nobody um, would touch it because... Nobody... The, the well, the case. dog wouldn't let anyone touch it. Um, the tears. dog comes in now. It only sees me. No problem. Get right through it. It must have just yeah, been the and experience. Out, of the in and out, two yeah. minutes. Two years of yeah. it learning to trust that we weren't going to hurt it. Because when a dog is quick, it, probably, it hurts. It probably got hurt, yeah. Yeah. So and you have to go to a groomer that knows what they must doing bleed it. when it goes too deep, too. Right. I mean, and this yeah. dog is never quick to bleed. Yeah. I'm so also that's more concerned. careful yeah. because I know, I know if I do. If a dog is being <laughs> excessively quicked by a groomer, the groomer is either being too fast or too careless or is okay. not skilled. Okay. Does it happen from time to time? You might get one, maybe because the dog moves or, you right, know. Right, right. But uh, they shouldn't happen sure. often. Yeah. All right, a few more questions. Can you use people's shampoo on your dog? I mean, people shampoo is tested on animals. So probably. I mean, can I recommend? I There's no need to recommend. I mean, it's just as easy to pick up a, food or a shampoo that's formulated specifically yep. for dogs. Just be aware of of watch out on the label and avoid anything with sodium lauryl sulfate. Okay, okay. sodium lauryl sulfate. Sodium lauryl sulfate is the uh, foaming agent, and it can be very irritating. All right. A dog goes out in the woods, runs into a skunk. I'm assuming you don't want him coming into your place. <laughs> yeah. What do people do about that? So, of oh, course. We welcome them. You yeah, do? Absolutely. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. That's good to know. I almost never turn away a skunk dog. Okay. Because okay. I would never want a skunk dog in my house. And the dogs are traumatized, too. They don't like that. No. Yeah. They don't want because that. Because it's covering up their natural scent. Yeah. Yeah. They so don't like it. Of good course, point. there's those easy home remedies that Google yeah. will tell you. But it really does come down to, you know, how, how thorough you are. So my advice, bring it to a professional. Okay. Yeah, we use enzyme-based things. And you get um, rid of the smell. You know, most dogs, and some dogs, you know, they get hit in the mouth. Yeah. Usually because they're up against the skunk and the skunk sprays them, so they're hit in the front. Mm. It absorbs into the mucosa. Okay. So that's almost impossible to get out. Um, but, uh, yeah, so bring it to a groomer. Uh, we don't care. We love it. And yeah. people want, like, shiny coats for their dogs. What What do they give the dog to do that? Uh, is those that the inside out. Quality food. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I have been told, and I've seen I've seen it in action, um, in Agaday. Yep, I've heard that, and I was wondering if that was true. I, I think so. Whether, okay. it's, whether it's good for it to be raw or hard-boiled, I don't know. I guess yeah. I, I don't have enough. She's, she's probably more. Quality fats are key. Quality when fats. I say fats, I'm not saying oils. Okay. Not seed oils. Seed oils are inflammatory. Fats, the fats from the animals, yeah. okay, are great 
for a dog. Yeah, you know, my dog loves it. It's a portion right. You know, it's a fat they're not going to get fat or obese. Yeah. Obese dogs mean well, they're not getting enough exercise. They're eating junk food. I mean, if you think back to their descendants, they were eating a lot of fat and bone right. and mm-hmm. yeah. just muscle. You can also, if everything. you want something immediate, you can just emulsify some um, raw right. virgin organic coconut oil, emulsify it in your hands, yep. and then just kind of, you know, okay. smooth it into their coat. But it comes from the inside. That's the key point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. One message you want to leave our audience before we, we break. Anything that you want to just leave them with? Alex, you go first. Who are you? Um, <laughs> oh. oh, there's so much. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know the message that I would want to leave. Um, you want me to go first, and then maybe yeah, we'll maybe you'll up. think of something. Yeah. If you don't, that one's that's a, okay. that, I read. I read your questions, and that's a hard one for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? Because it, it, it there it's broad, it's fast. Yeah. So when we get back to you, I'll I'll I guess, give you two questions. I guess one thing I would like to say is you know. If you see that your dog is matted or, you know, you're, you're kind of skeptical on going to the groomer or you don't want to go to the groomer yet or, you know, maybe maybe you don't have, maybe you can't really afford it mm. and you see your dog getting, you know, more and more matted every single day, your dog feels that. Yeah. You know, and as a groomer who has a heart, yeah. when I see something like that, you know, if there's, if there's an issue with money trouble and that's why you're not doing it, Call psychotic growing mm-hmm. because okay. we will work with you. That's good to because know. there is there is nothing worse for me to go to sleep knowing that there is a dog in pain that I could have fixed. Okay, that's yeah. a that's a great comment to leave really the audience. That's answer. good. So yeah. you did have something to say there. I did. It just yeah. took us all right. All right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, I think one of the hardest things about being a groomer, if you were to ask that question, um, would be the neglect that we see sometimes. Yeah. That's, it just tears us apart. But the statistically, 76% of all households own one or more pets. Right. Okay, so grooming is going to definitely come into the equation there. Um, so that needs to be appreciated that, you know, groomers are not just fluff and puff, okay? Right. This is a, a profession that is requires a lot of skill. Are there groomers out there that are going to process your dog, do it quick, yep. out the door? Not a second of grooming. It's quality versus quantity and um grooming is extremely important it's not a luxury it's an right. absolute necessity okay your dog is going to walk out the door it's going to be clean it's going to feel great its coat's going to be healthy right i mean that to me is priceless yeah um and it's just it's super super important to um take the grooming seriously yeah um and take your groomer seriously too i mean we work hard like i said it takes the patience of a saint and the the endurance of an athlete and the skill of a surgeon. <laughs> and I have done you know? some surgery. Yeah. And a lot of surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I sure have. So many other groomers, I see these things and I'm like, you know, a lot, of, not to talk bad about any other groomers, um, but, you know, it does take a skilled groomer to get off a pelt that is so badly matted yeah. without a nick on that dog. Yeah. Sure, sure. And I do it time and time and time again. And it's like, yeah. And then we run with that. We run with that because. Mm-hmm. When we present the dog to the customer at the end of the day, yeah. or whenever they pick it up, we educate the customer so this will not happen That's again. Great. We just don't process the dog, collect our money, and we don't care. Right. Okay, we care. It's like this is our golden opportunity to educate somebody so that this never happens again. This is what we mm-hmm. do. We set you up on a regimen. We're going to call you the night before. This is what you need to do. This is what you have to do at home. You cannot let that happen. It's extremely painful for that dog. It's not healthy. Right. Same thing with cats. Cats, yeah. That's yep. a whole and other rabbits. podcast. Yeah. Well, about that, that, well, that's and another rabbits. podcast. I was going to ask yeah. you just in, in a yeah. closing, like, what are your service lines? Like, who so, do you see? So, I mean, rabbits. rabbits are more of a, it's kind of a case-by-case basis. You know, rabbit skin is literally like tissue paper. actual tissue paper. I mean, yeah. you look at it the wrong way, it'll tear. So, rabbits. So, it is kind of limited to what I can do on a rabbit safely. Um, of course, the nails, no problem. Um, the private areas, you know. Rabbits, that's something that a lot of people. A lot of people forget about. It's It know? can be really ugly. If you have a rabbit at home. It's so painful. Check its pee-pee every month. You know, just flip it over and look. Mm-hmm. You know, because. It'll burn their skin. The acids yes. from the urine yeah. and the feces will burn their skin. Okay. For sure. Burn it right down to the tissue. So you, so painful. You get dogs, cats, rabbits. Yeah. Is that. Pretty yep. much. Ferrets. I mean, that's, that's there's pretty, a need for ferrets. It's pretty much. I have a groomer that works for us that yeah. specializes in ferrets and yeah. cats. Yeah, okay. interesting. Definitely cats. We do a lot of cats. A lot of groomers don't do yeah. cats. 
Like I said, that's another podcast. We'll have to talk about that. That's my daughter time. brings to you her yeah. Maine Coon. Oh, so beautiful, yeah. beautiful animals. Steffi. Huh? Steph Medeiros. Steph Medeiros. Okay. It's Funny. a black cat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do how do people reach you? Uh, well, you can reach me by email if you want. Um, so that's whole pet. So W H O L E pet P E T four zero two at gmail dot com. Okay. Or um, you can go on Facebook. Facebook is very popular. Most people, you know, use our Facebook. Um, you can DM me through Facebook. Um, I have some Instagram. I have an Instagram account. Um, it's kind of, and they can call, I assume, too. They can call 401-624-9969. Okay, great. Okay. And, uh, you know, so we, cause she, she wanted me to say this. Okay. She wanted to say that, she wanted me to say this before. You know, if you... You could, you could absolutely contact the owner, you know, Anne Dupree. But if you want to talk to the real boss, um, <laughs> uh, you can call Sakonic Grooming. Is, is this where we're editing, Tyler? <laughs> like, likely I'll be there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, no, we're both the boss. So, well, thank you so much, Anne, Alex. We really appreciate you coming thank on you the show and us. educating us. I, mean, I didn't know that, you know, what groomers did, really, quite honestly. So I learned a lot. I'm sure you did, too. Yeah. I'm sure our audience did also. So thank you so thank much. You so much for having us. Yeah, we pleasure. really appreciate it. And I want to thank our sponsors, Bay Coast Bank. It's just right for all of your financial needs, visit baycoast.bank or call 508-678-7641 to learn more. Duncan Hearing Healthcare, hearing healthcare you can trust with sites in Fall River, Dartmouth, Falmouth, and Centerville. For more information, visit their website at duncanhearing.com. And of course, thank you for all of you for listening to our show. And if you'd like to become a sponsor, please contact us at 774-319-4230. Special thanks to my good friend Ron Gamash for our intro music to Primate Care, your trusted medical providers in southeastern New England and Bioskills of Northeast for producing our show and also available to produce your show by calling 774-301-8811. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Mm-hmm.